Okay, we're going to look at thermochemistry, and thermochemistry is a study of changes in heat energy. We know that our substances will absorb heat um, through our temperature changes, and we can calculate how much heat they can absorb before the temperature starts changing. We do this by the use of a calorimeter, which is measuring how much heat was gained or lost by measuring the change in temperature. Please remember that heat flows from the hot thing to the cold thing. So when we look at our calorimeter, whatever substance is hot is losing the energy um, and the thing with a colder temperature then is absorbing that energy. This is one way that we determine the calories of food because calories is a form of energy. Um, so it's usually done in what we call a bomb calorimeter, which is this picture over here. You have your food in there, it gets ignited so it burns, and then the temperature of the water will change um, and we kind of figure it out that way. Um, heat lost by a reaction then is gained by the water the same amount, and then the heat lost by water is then gained by the reaction if it was endothermic. So we're gonna look at a couple of examples and then in class we will be doing some labs with this. To calculate um, the amount of heat lost or gained, which is Q, uh, we use the formula Q equals CPM delta T. And this is given to you on page three of your reference tables. So it is not something that you have to have memorized. Um, on page three, it's actually Q equals MCP delta T. CP is the specific heat of that substance. So this is the amount of heat it can gain prior to changing its temperature. The units are either joules per gram Celsius. You can also write that with the negative one showing that the grams in the Celsius are in the denominator. These are listed for you on page one of your reference table. In the middle box, we have the specific heat of water, and there's actually three different specific heats for water. And then at the bottom of page one, where we have our densities of metals, that second column is the specific heat of metals. M refers to mass, and it needs to be in grams. And then delta T, delta means change. And so we subtract the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So this is where the value could be negative um, if the final temperature is lower, meaning that energy was being um, lost. During a phase change, however, um, we don't have to worry about the change in temperature because a phase change temperature doesn't change. So we have to take the delta T out. And so we get two different formulas. Again, these are on page three of your reference table, so you don't have to memorize them. V stands for vaporization. And then remember that vaporization is when you go from a liquid to a gas. And then HF, the F stands for fusion. And this is where students get confused. That is actually for the melting, the phase change of melting which means we're going from a solid to a liquid. We are only gonna calculate this for water, although we could calculate it for other substances if they told us the HV or HF value, but water's values are given to us in the middle of page one of our reference tables. So that's why we're only gonna look at water. All right, so here's an example. What I think is important to do first is to label what you have using those symbols that are found on page three of your reference table. So 329 grams would be the mass. So that is M. And then we have 15 to 55 degrees Celsius, which is our temperatures. So this is gonna be our Delta T, our change in temperature. And that is the final temperature minus the initial temperature, and that would give us 40 degrees Celsius. And we're gonna put a decimal there to make that zero significant. And then we have the amount of heat absorbed. So anytime you see that J by itself, that's gonna be the Q. Now the K in front of it stands for kilo, and we don't want kilojoules or kilojoules, we just want joules. 
So we're going to remember King Henry died and usually drinking chocolate milk. And we're going to go from kilojoules to just, just joules. So that is one, two, three letters to the right. So we're going to move the decimal three, le three places to the right. So one, two, three. So that would equal six, nine, zero, zero joules. We are looking for the specific heat. So CP would be our X. And then we're going to use that to identify the material. So if you remember, or look at page three of your reference tables, Q equals M CP delta T. And we're just going to plug our numbers in. So 6900 joules is equal to 329 grams times the specific heat, which is what we're solving for. So we're going to use X times our change in temperature, which was 40 degrees Celsius. So how do we solve for X? We're going to divide both sides by our mass and our change in temperature. So the mass would cancel on this side. So we have joules divided by um, grams times Celsius. Now you want to make sure that your calculator multiplies before it divides. So make sure that you have the bottom in a set of parentheses. So 6900 divided by parentheses to 329 times 40, close parentheses, um, and X would equal point and we need two significant figures because our um, heat and our temperature only had two significant figures, we would say 52 joules per gram Celsius. So there's our specific heat. To figure out the material, we're going to look at page one of the reference tables, and we're going to look for the specific heat that is closest to 0.52. Now on your reference table, they went three significant figures. We only have an answer to two significant figures, but we can still match it up. And so the one that has closest to 0.52 is titanium or TI, if you wanna abbreviate with the symbol. So the material then has to be titanium. Let's look at another example. How much heat, so this time we're looking for Q, is needed to raise the temperature of 35 grams, so there's my mass, of lead by 19.2 Celsius. So they've already done the subtraction for us. They're telling us what that change in temperature was. So we have, we're looking for Q. We have M and T, so where are we gonna get the specific heat? Well, they tell us the substance is lead. And if we know the substance, we can use our reference tables to get the specific heat. So the specific heat of lead, based on page one of our reference tables, is 0.129 joules per gram Celsius. And then we can use our formula from page three, Q equals MCP delta T, and just plug in our numbers. So Q is what we're looking for, so that's X. And then our mass times the specific heat, times the change in temperature. So X is already isolated, so all we have to do is type that in. We need three significant figures because our mass and our temperature has three significant figures. So the answer would be 86.7. And then if we look at our units, grams would cancel, Celsius would cancel, leaving us with just joules. So 86.7 joules is needed. Okay, here we're looking at how much energy is absorbed by water, 23 grams, so that's my mass, and then it says boiled. Remember, boiling means you're going from a liquid to a gas, so we're doing a phase change. And remember, during a phase change, temperature is held constant. So we don't wanna use Q equals MC delta T. We wanna use one of our phase changes. Liquid to gas is also called vaporization. 
So we're going to use the formula Q equals MHV, V for vaporization, liquid to gas. How much energy? So we're looking for Q. So Q is our X. We have our mass of 23.5 grams. And then we can look on page one of our reference table and the heat of vaporization is 2,260 joules per gram. So all we have to do then is multiply those. Because the mass is to three significant figures, we want our answer to be three significant figures. So it'd be five, three, one. And then to keep the magnitude, we need those two zeros. Now that grams cancels grams is in joules. We can shorten that by using kilojoules. So remember King Henry died unusually drinking chocolate milk. We're gonna go from joules to kilojoules. That is one, two, three letters to the left. So we're gonna move the decimal one, two, three places to the left. And we have 53.1 kilojoules. Now you don't have to convert it to kilojoules if you don't want to, um, especially if the question doesn't specify that. All right, our last question, what is the mass? So we're looking for M needed to absorb 421 joules. So that is our Q of heat when water is melted. So melted is a phase change. So temperature doesn't change. So we're not gonna use the formula with Delta T in it. And then uh, melted is a fancy way of saying that is fusion. So we're going to use Q equals MHF. HF, remember, is a constant on page one. So we're going to plug our numbers in. 421 joules is equal to X times the heat of fusion for water, which is 334 joules per gram. And so to get our mass, we need to divide both sides by 334. Divide both sides by 334. So that would cancel. So 421 divided by 304 means we would have an answer of 1.26. Now it's only three significant figures because that's the number of significant figures in our heat. Um, joules would cancel, leaving us with grams. So it's 1.26 grams of water.